Welcome back to another one of our episodes in which we dig deep to bring you tales of the worst things humans have done to each other in the name of justice. Today, we won't be talking about the dark past, nor are we going to describe to you something bloody and brutal, but what you're about to hear is certainly in the realms of shocking. The worst part is, this is going on in today's world. Without further ado, let's have a look at what have been called China's Vans of Death. They were introduced in China in 1997 and have been used ever since. You could say they're kind of like ice cream trucks that visit certain neighborhoods, except for the fact that they are, in the words of one human rights organization, like government-sanctioned death squads. Why would China do such a thing, you're likely wondering? Well, while most of the world thinks the death vans are barbaric, China thinks they're more humanitarian and more cost-effective than sending someone to a site of execution. As you'll see at the end, some people in China are actually very proud of their death vans. Let us explain why. We don't exactly know how many people are executed each year in China, but recent reports say that it's more than a thousand, which puts the country in first place for the number of executions. Back in the late 90s and the early 2000s, it was estimated that the number of executions could have been 12,000 or more. There are 46 capital crimes in China, and we won't mention them all. Seven of them are related to crimes endangering national security, such as rioting and rebellion, urging people to separate from the state, or spying. You can also be executed for embezzlement or prison escape, for intentional assault, or even the production or sale of counterfeit medicine. So did people committing any of these crimes get a visit from the execution van? Well, first of all, like the USA, there are appeals processes in place for those that have been handed the death sentence, and since the mid-2000s, more and more sentences have been overturned. Vans don't just turn up at houses and start whacking people. There's a lengthy due process just like in most countries, and like in the US, a person can have a last-minute stay of execution. Under Article 252 of Chinese law, it's written that people will get the firing squad or be given a lethal injection of drugs. There's something else in that article that's important for today's show, and that's the fact that people can be executed at an execution ground or at a designated place of custody. Ok, so now you're wondering what an execution ground is. Well, things don't go down like they do in the USA. In China, if a person is to be executed by firing squad, an execution ground is set up, usually close to where the condemned is being held. This has three perimeters, with the inner circle being the execution place, the second circle being where the people's armed police guard, and the outer perimeter is where the local police guard. As you can imagine, that takes a bit of effort and money, so more and more people have been getting legally whacked at a designated place of custody. And this is where the vans come in. The vans only deliver a lethal injection. No one gets shot in the van, of course. In fact, it's written that in some provinces and municipalities, lethal injection is now the only form of capital punishment. A man named Kang Jung Win designed one of the vans that was called the Jingwan Automobile Death Van. He said in 2006 that giving people lethal injection rather than shooting them was more humane. He also said the van is much cheaper than setting up execution sites that are not always in the same place where the crime took place. He said that's good for saving money, but it also acts as a deterrent when local people get to see the death van swing by their village or town. So what exactly happens? Well, when the death squad arrives, the prisoner is led to the van by at least four people. All this has to be videoed so that law enforcement authorities can see everything going down as it should. This is important because in the past, those doing the executions would sometimes harvest organs from the condemned and sell them. That's not to say organ harvesting of prisoners isn't still going on, but that's a story for another day. Let's just say that if organs are still harvested like Amnesty International seems to think, death vans would be convenient in another way. Not all the vans are alike, but we know exactly what the Jingwan automobile death van looks like because Mr. Zhang Wen was interviewed. He said in 2006, I'm most proud of the bed, it's very humane, like an ambulance. He added that it's brutal to drag someone into the van, so the stretcher-like bed slides out of the van and the prisoner can be killed with ease. It's fast, it's convenient, and it's cheap like a one-stop service for execution. Another thing pointed out, this time by a Chinese lawyer, is the fact that execution by firing squad can be messy, which is not good for the family of the deceased. He said that when a person is shot, he has to open his mouth so the bullet goes right through the head. That makes less mess and causes less distress for the grieving family of the deceased, but only if the executioner's aim is perfect. As you can see, for the Chinese authorities, the death vans are a winner in so many ways. 
That's why China has made about 40 of them to date, each the same, all equipped with CCTV and an electric-powered bed that comes out of the back. The lethal injection is no different from one you'd find in the US, and the service is delivered in the same way you'd expect in the US. So, you might ask, why are human rights organizations criticizing China for its death bans? Well, we said they're extolled for their convenience, but those organizations say they are too convenient. They don't deny that China isn't saving tons of cash, and they don't say the actual execution is any worse than it is in the US, but they say that mobile capital punishment just makes killing too easy. They say it'll lead to an increase in executions, and other critics have said that the fans are just a little too similar to the mobile gas chambers used by the Germans during World War II. As we said, we don't know exactly how many people are executed in China, but we do know some well-known people that got a visit from the van. A Chinese billionaire named Yuan Baojing went into the van in 2006 after being convicted of murder, corruption, and being part of a mafia-like company. He'd been in a long feud with another billionaire named Liu Han. And guess what? He also went into the van, but years later in 2014. Corrupt politicians are not exempt from the death penalty. In 2007, the van visited a Mr. Zheng Chaiyu, the former director of the State Food and Drug Administration of the People's Republic of China. He'd done shady deals with shady medicine suppliers and allowed dangerous drugs to enter China. He was paid handsomely in bribes, but people died because of the dangerous medicines. Seeing as the death van is convenient, we imagine hundreds of people are being visited by the van each year. In fact, one spokesperson for a death van company told the media, we've not sold our execution cars to foreign countries yet, but if they need one, they could contact our company directly. We're not too sure if the death van export business has taken off just yet, but you never know. Maybe other countries will catch on to the convenience. Now you need to watch this, the Blood Eagle, worst punishments in the history of mankind. Or have a look at this.